Houston Gearbox. Uh, my name is Mikael Kuller and I work here as a product manager, <coughs> same as most of my colleagues around here today. And I will talk a little bit, as I said, about the axles and gearbox. Two gearboxes, or let's say one new gearbox, and then we have the one we launched already a year ago, approximately. So it's the G25 and the G33. Rear axle, a brand new gear, uh, rear axle. This one is named R756. Uh, the G25 and the G33. Uh, the new G25 is actually technically, in the build-up, identical to the G33. Uh, it's a very compact gearbox um, where we have removed synchronization packages and uh, uh, reverse gears and things like that, making it compact and light. Um, the G25 and the G33, the, the difference between the two axles is the engine torque. So the G25 can take up to 2,500 newton meters, and the G33 up to 3,300 newton meters. The, that 2,500 actually stands for the 460 engine. So G25 up to 460, above 460 goes with the G33. Here and straight forward. The gearbox has 14 gears forward, and up to eight gears on the reverse. Four gears on the reverse as standard, the other four are optional because usually you don't need those uh, four optional gears. And we have increased the spread, Oops. the gear ratio spread with 60% compared to the old gearbox. And you can see it in this range over here where we have, here we have a GRSO, which is the current overdrive gearbox, which goes to 13 point something. And here you have the new G25, G33, which goes to approximately 21. That is on the crawler gears, on the very slow gears. This improves the slow um, uh, driving properties a lot. On the reverse, you have a small improvement here as well. Slow speed properties are improved. And we also have those faster gears to the left here. That, those are the eight reverse gears. The first four, you get a standard. The other ones, you request. And usually, they are not needed. I mean, this one here, if you are on a racetrack, you can go 50 kilometers and above on the reverse. So it's not a very commonly used gear, but there are some, if you have a long stretch of reversing where you cannot turn around, it comes in useful. So they have actually been requested. So you request if you... 54 is fast. Um, and he has been talking about uh, efficiency. And this is the thing here. We have also in the gearbox efficiency and we have efficiency over there. We have a splendid engine and equally splendid from, uh, gearbox and, uh, and rear axle. This gives a super powertrain. On the direct gear here, you have 99.8% uh, efficiency. Extremely small losses. It's almost like having a steel drawer between the engine and the propeller shaft. Actually, the extension of the propeller shaft to the engine. So 99.8%. And the weight goes down 60 or 75 kilos compared to a GRS gearbox. Uh, and it depends upon if it's the G25 or the G33. We go to the axle. This is also, like the engine, totally new, from inside and out, or outside to the end, whatever you prefer. And it's a multi-purpose rear axle, suitable for a number of different applications, 
um, goes up to approximately 45 forms uh, of framework. So for the local Scandinavian customers doing 60, 70 and above, maybe this is not the perfect axle, but if you do continental traffic, then it's absolutely perfect. And we ex expect that this one will actually cover almost all the needs for continental uh, semi-trailer uh, transports. We get nine axle ratios. And since it's a completely new uh, rear axle, we have also made it possible to have some slightly faster axle here with 195 and 2.12 being, I would say, extremely fast. Gives opportunities for volume goods, very small tires, and high uh, cruising speeds. Service intervals are also going up. Um, and you get a small weight saving, up to 27 kilos, dependent upon gear ratio, what brakes chosen, or suspension type. So it all adds up. Uh, you remove the retarder over there, you save 65, 75 kilos here, and you save 27 over there. In all, it gives more payload, or possibility of more payload. Depends what you're transporting, of course. About that uh, 27 kilos, uh, what is the old version? Uh, did it compare to what was the... R780. That is the one we compare with, because that is our most commonly used rear axle today, and that is the one we are almost always using for the 40-45 ton uh, train weight combinations in Europe. As I said, multi-purpose rear axle. So it can be used for uh, uh, bulk transport, uh, any kind of semi-trailer operation in Europe. We look at refuse collectors, volume goods, crane, flatbed with cranes, etc. Where we have those, uh, uh, call it moderate, uh, train weights. And why do we introduce this one? Well, that is where we have the biggest part of our volume today. So if we really want to squeeze fuel consumption, we also go to go towards the big volume drivers uh, of our production. I will do, go through a very quick example so that you can see how it works. We take a truck, an example. It's a European tractor, 45 ton. 80 kilometers per hour cruising speed, uh, moves kind of hilly topography. It could be going from Italy to uh, Germany, Italy to Denmark, and you go across the Alps, you go across the Castle Hills, etc. Uh, stop frequency, we have, I have put medium. And then we have a chart uh, where we select how that, that gives a category. And uh, in this case then, we get category B. And then we have another little charge saying that B should be somewhere between 1050 and 1200, a little bit subjective, uh, but it, it is about the skills of the salesman also when he knows the customer to discuss how it's being used and what the most suitable might be. So in this case, we say that, well, 1100 is what we want to target. You have the cruising speed, um, <coughs> RPM, which is 1100. We put the gearbox, a G25, if we have a 460 engine. And now we want to have tires. Usually the buyer of the truck, he knows what tires he wants. So that's a default. 315.7B is a common tire on this type of truck. And we need a relatively fast axle ratio suitable for this. We put in a 2.53. It's not one of the ultra fast or anything. It's an intermediate, but 2.53. With this, you get 1100 RPM at 80 kilometers per hour. Um, and on overdrive, you get 850 at 80. That is not a very good RPM. But as I said, this gearbox, gives almost 100% efficiency on the direct gear. So we want this truck to run on direct gear as much as possible because that way it saves you. If the truck goes empty on the return, 
you have a little bit of downhill, etc. Then the overdrive will kick in. If you drive in Sweden, I don't know how it is where you come from, but if this tractor would disconnect the trailer and go from Stockholm to Malmö with the tractor alone, then you're allowed to drive 90. And at 90, it's 950. Then the overdrive will actually kick in quite frequently. So, we focus on direct gear. Engine performs the best, gearbox performs the best, and that is then combined with a matched rear axle ratio to give all of those properties, super properties. A few key takeaways. We have those new, absolutely stunning engines and with splendid gearboxes and really great rear axles and we get a super powertrain. 